You don't have to be an economist to know how tough a year 2023 was. Renters in Canada have never had it so bad, and it could get even worse. More Canadians than ever before are having to turn to food banks to get by. The question, though, isn't what happened in 2023. The question on everyone's mind is where things go from here. So here are four things to watch in 2024. For the last 18 months, the single dominating feature on the economic landscape has been the fight to rein in inflation. Inflation peaked last summer at 8.1%. Since then, it has slowly moved back to the Bank of Canada's target window. Now, reasonable people can and will disagree on precisely why inflation's come back under control. Was it the Bank of Canada's aggressive cycle of hiking interest rates? Was it global forces pulling down the prices of stuff like gasoline? Probably a bit of both. What we do know is how that change will work its way into the economy. The Bank of Canada has spent the last 18 months pushing interest rates relentlessly higher. In March of 2022, rates were at a mere 0.25%. Then they started to rise, slowly, then quickly. In its last decision of 2023, the Bank of Canada left rates unchanged, but reviewed the most recent economic data. We're at that point, you know, have we done enough? Maybe yes, maybe no. I think increasingly the conditions are suggesting that monetary policy is working. That may not sound like much, but in central banker speak, that's a big shift. The bank is saying interest rates have done their job, and that sets up a big change heading into the new year. We think that the Bank of Canada starts cutting rates in April and continues to cut rates at each subsequent meeting thereafter for the rest of the year. Forecasts from Desjardins show the Bank of Canada's key overnight lending rate should fall all the way to 3.5% by the end of the year and 2.25% by the end of 2025. That's the good news. The bad news is we still haven't felt the full impact of all those rate hikes. For months now, Canada's GDP growth has flatlined. Households squeezed by inflation and higher borrowing costs spent less. Even record levels of immigration couldn't boost growth beyond the anemic levels we saw this year. And the worst has yet to come. In 2023, only a fraction of existing mortgage holders renewed at higher rates. CMHC says another 2.2 million mortgages are set to renew over the next two years. There's a wall of mortgage renewals that this economy is about to hit, and to get going into 2025, it's only going to get worse. In a lot of ways, 2023 and 2024 will be mirror images of each other. Last year was dominated by a cost of living crisis and a slowing economy. We may have avoided a technical recession, but good luck telling that to anyone. Ask your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues. Many, if not most, are convinced we're in a recession right now. We've just had one of the biggest declines in inflation that we've ever seen without a full-on recession. That's great news. Now, can we get it the rest of the way down to 2% without uh, much pain? That's, that's still the big question for 2024. There's a real risk the economy will slip into a recession as the lagging impact of all of those rate hikes piles up, which leads us to one last thing to watch. We love to think we know what's coming next, but we live in a world awash in uncertainty. Wars are raging in Europe and the Middle East. Global trade deals are being threatened by those vowing to go it alone. And if we've learned anything in these last tumultuous years, it's that Canada is never immune to the winds of global forces when they blow this way.